thank you so much for being here. It really means so much you know, to the change that we want to make. So I founded ADHD Girls when I was um, 40, diagnosed with ADHD at the age of 40, and really wanting to find out what happened to us and what happened to me, really. The purpose today really is to try and empower you so that you know deeply what you're made of and who you are so that you can go forward and find the support and hopefully create a life that you really desire and love. ODHD woman is a person. I know it's obvious, but um, it's not that obvious when you go and look for a diagnosis and support because um, you may be evaluated based on male-centric criteria and you might also receive support based on that. So the thing is, there are a lot of changes that happen in our brain and body and um, there needs to be understanding of how we have innate differences. So how can we actually make sure that people get adequate support if we can't even recognize them to begin with? So ODHD, social communication lived experiences, look very, very similar to, to autism, social communication patterns, where you take things really literally, you struggle with small talks, and what people keep saying is that, I feel that I understand people, but people don't understand me. And that's because you may feel it in your body, but you may not have the words to describe your experience. Are we really masking or are our traits actually just different from stereotypical uh, autistic ADHD traits? A lot of us manage to mask because we are hypervigilant about social rejection. We internalize a lot. We're hyperempathic, very intelligent, high achievers, high functioning. Perhaps, you know, you develop this mindset where you just keep being an achiever and doing more and more, achieving more and more until one day you just couldn't do it anymore. And it's really sad that so many of us have had to just kind of put a facade on, you know, out in the world because we, know, we think that that's what's expected of us, right? The ODHD men tend to be more thrill-seeking, looking outwards, you know, dopamine-seeking, whereas all the HD women can be more kind of like you just want to be safe and connect and bond, you know, and, and also what you are driven by can be more, you know, that partnership. I like to compare between the male hormone levels and the females and really show you what nature have you do and how God is really, truly unfair. Because the male hormone levels they kind of oscillate very gently, you know, a bit like those rulers that you got when you were little, but you kind of have this lovely stencil shape. It's very leveled. And for men, they gradually decrease as they get older, but it's a very gradual decrease. So for women though, look at this. And that's a normal cycle. It's like, woo, it's like a roller coaster, right? And so estrogen starts to rise towards ovulation and dips towards luteal phase, premenstrual phase. And with women with ADHD and autism and ODHD women, we get that, wow, I'm really happy. I'm going to go up here. I feel like amazing. And so many of us were diagnosed a little bit later because estrogen was kind of like a filter along with some sort of steadiness in our life. Have you ever thought that maybe some of the challenges you go through is biological and maybe it isn't what happened when you were three? So I want to bring together how, how, how it all connects because I was going to the hormones uh, specialist, I was going to the naturopath and the health specialist and then I got diagnosed by ODHD, but they all work individually. So in terms of society, it would be great if more people understood us. Also, research needs to be higher, and I struggle to find good teachings about it. I would also love, love if you could be tested for both autism and ADHD. This is my professional training, so uh, very welcome to sign up to it.